It is the 9th of April 2021. A very good morning to you. Thank you very much for keeping it Y254. My name is Ram Maguko. We are broadcasting live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, it is uh, Y254 TV. We appreciate your presence right here on this show. This is Power Talk. A conversation that we, have to, we are having today is one that... Um, it has interested so many people, organizations, government entities, and individuals. Today, we are talking about toxic relationships. That's right. Toxic relationships. That is what we shall be conversing today. Remember, according to statistics and research that has uh, been done so far, we have data from the National uh, Crime Research Center, which shows that lifetime prevalence of uh, uh, sexually and uh, gender-based violence for women uh, stands at 38% against 20.9% for men as at now. This is what has been uh, you know mostly aligned to toxic relationship violence you know hate when we talk about toxic relationships what do we mean today on power talk we're having a conversation to help us with pastor ken okoth he is joining me today he is a motivational speaker he is a lecturer and a teacher he is also a counselor uh, uh, and who teaches at the african nazarene university caribs and a pastor thank you so much and uh, it's a pleasure having you also joining me today i'm also joined by none other than susan uh, nganga he is a youth leader and founder of prime holiday adventures Susan. Thank you. Thank you for having um, me. Sarah Nganga, sorry. Yes. All right. It's a pleasure having you also right here on Y254. This is Power Talk, and you can be part of this conversation right here. The hashtag is always is Power Talk Show on Twitter. Head over to Twitter. Give us your thoughts in regards to these toxic relationships. Should we move on? When do we move on? That is a question. Give us your take on Facebook. Also, Y254 is where you can find us. The hashtag, Y2, uh, 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 the hashtag is Power Talk Show on Twitter at Y254 channel at Ram. Aguko. Let's get this show going. We shall sample your feedback as you continue. Remember, we also ask our viewers to send in uh, uh, their thoughts. If you're not going to be available on Twitter or Facebook, you can also send us a one-minute clip of yourself telling us what you think about toxic relationships. When should we move on? Okay, we shall sample those clips as we continue with this conversation this morning. Karibu uh, Nisana. Asante. All right, let me start with, uh, 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 with the first of all, dispensing of this. We are talking about toxic relations, uh, relationships, but someone may wonder, is my relationship toxic? <laughs> How can I know that I am in a toxic relationship? Just from the definition, what is a toxic relationship in your view, Sarah? Um, toxic relationship, I mean, um, when maybe you're not happy and you feel like uh, the relationship is not benefiting you, mm -hmm. maybe as it's used to, or the intentions as to why you got into the relationships, mm -hmm. you know, are not well served. Mm -hmm. I think that's when you now... Uh, get aware that you know I'm in a relationship when you feel like whatever you wanted is not what you get yes okay okay uh, sure. Pastor? I think uh, a toxic relationship uh, first of all maybe to define what a relationship must be defined within friendship mm -hmm. and in a in a friendship environment uh, people's interests and needs are always met within a friendship or a relationship mm -hmm. when somebody's interests are never taken into consideration mm -hmm they feel hurt to the point that there's some relationship that a partner may become kind of uh, jealous and therefore a dangerous person to be in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. That's when you know it is toxic. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and just to dispense of it even further, if I want to leave the house and go to town, my partner says, no, you cannot do that. Does that qualify as uh, one sign that I'm in a toxic relationship because you said not getting to be able to do what you want in that environment. Yes. Does that also qualify? Let me mm. see. It, it may uh. seem so. Uh, you know, communication is a, is a, is a, a, a dynamic thing. Uh, the tone variation. The tone of the person who is speaking mm. and how you perceive that kind of communication may be able to show you 
whether the person is is really infringing on your rights or not. Because sometimes they may say no, but they are saying it in a friendly way and giving you some kind of advice and reasons for you mm -hmm. not going to town at that moment. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are some people who just say no, no uh, and they are adamant. Just hold your microphone closer mm -hmm. to your mouth. Yes, like and so they say no, mm -hmm. and they say they don't give you valid reasons. It shows that they are just in a situation in which they are commanding. They are having their way mm -hmm. while your interests are not taken care of. Okay, okay, let me come to you. When someone says that um, they are um, being abusive to you, mm -hmm. um, how, how far and how deep can a relationship be toxic? What are the elements that shows that this thing is actually getting to a point of no return? When uh, maybe your partner, you know, hits hits you or maybe um, you're having a difference when it comes to communication mm -hmm. like um, our friend here is saying mm. uh, you know I can be saying no to something just to hurt you not because uh, you know I want you maybe to go to town but I, I, I want to tell you that don't go just for my you know selfishness mm. or personal gains so I think when uh, maybe uh, the, the, the the communication you lose the communication and then the next time you're fighting it it gets physical so if, 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 if someone says don't do this then mm -hmm. that relationship is toxic not really but you should get the reasons as to why that person is saying no maybe you've asked for something mm. or maybe um you you really need something mm. or maybe you're having a difference when it comes to you know interest so that's when now maybe it becomes physical Mm -hmm. Not really saying no, but mm -hmm. the reasons as to why that person is disagreeing with you mm -hmm. on certain issues. So they disagree with you mm -hmm. without giving possible reasons or yeah, reasonable or valid reasons. Or valid, valid reasons. Yes. If I am uh, 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 to give different examples, also, mm -hmm. we have such scenarios where um, husbands and wives uh, may disagree at some point in the house and uh, the husband tells the wife or the wife tells the husband i would like you to stop interacting with the person x y and z and stop going to place a b and c does that also con give you know um, give someone uh, the lack of freedom and someone will say that hey um you can't force me to do what you want thereby making them go get into a disagreement and that's what leads to, to domestic violence but to a given extent yes but you've got to realize that our backgrounds sometimes uh, nurture us in a given environment mm. to the point that when we express ourselves, our background comes into the picture. Sometimes the way we speak, the way we communicate is a very key component of our relationship uh, with the person that we do have before us, especially when it comes to marriage relationship. You know, in the beginning, we were talking just about people relating. Mm -hmm. It may be just a, a relationship that is starting that has not really led to marriage. Mm -hmm. But especially now when people start to live together, that's when you realize who people really are. You know, I always tell people that it is in marriage when the gifts of the Holy Spirit will be tested <laughs> in your life. <laughs> and so at that point, uh -huh. somebody will be who they are. Mm -hmm. in, in, in the beginning parts of relationship, mm -hmm. the preliminary stages, people hide their feelings, they hide what they, You may never really know what somebody loves and what they don't love. But in a relationship now that is in the confine of marriage mm. then you will always know a person for who they are and when they say no to something uh -huh. they may think that they have right mm -hmm. but marriage even marriage is based on friendship C can you be able to predetermine someone's toxicity at the initial stages before even getting married to married to them i think you can you can when you get to interact with a person deeply deeply and, and how deep is deep you, you can't hide everything and you'll always spot something that maybe doesn't uh, make you happy and it's better at that point you point it out mm. you know i don't like this i don't like that so that your partner knows that she doesn't when i go or i step at this point 
and that's when now the respect comes in so when you start living with a person it it becomes a little bit easier because now you know what the person wants mm -hmm. they might i i agree with you some height especially maybe things that they think you know when this person realize it realize that i'm um, like this, uh, she's going to run away or he's going to leave me. Mm -hmm. So they hide. But there are some things that you can take and there are some things that you cannot take. So, and you better lay them. So how do you really rate? Mm -hmm. um, Pastor, you, 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 you've done uh, counseling for many people. Yes, a lot of time. It, it includes also the, the, those... My the, everyday life. <laughs> it's, it's part of your My life. everyday life. As you counsel someone, can you be able to predetermine that this person is actually someone who has violent tendencies? You can. It's, I, as a counselor, can. And no, my role as a counselor is not to make decisions for people, mm -hmm. but to give them an ability and capacity to make decisions in a godly way for themselves for themselves and in many times uh in our conversations like maybe the first time when i'm counseling somebody and they come i sit with my wife and we sit with them and we ask them about their backgrounds so that we, we can be able to know their faith values that we may be able to know wh where they have come from uh, you know people people's values are within their cultures and so it, yes mm -hmm. it, their culture culture carries a lot of things and you know that culture is hidden in a language mm. so most of the time our first language orient us to a given culture okay you may be a luo but born in a situation in which the environment does not give you an opportunity to really be a luo so the culture of the surrounding will always come into play whenever you talk to people and when, when as you talk to people you realize that sometimes they're not very compatible you ask them um a simple questions like how many children would you like to have and then ladies would say four mm. or two and then this young man would say six and mm -hmm. but in most of these conversations men are always erratic because they want more children in their view their perception and their world view mm. makes them be erratic because they are not ready to, to dialogue you realize the lady may say four but they still have room to talk and ladies are very are very cooperative they are very cooperative especially to a person who wants to reason with them okay and, and and even today i always tell men in my church mm. that uh, uh, uh. all problems in marriage relationship begin with men it's only that ladies walk with a jerry can or petrol when they realize that a situation is difficult they don't know how to handle it and they pour more so, petrol so, to so, it. so pastor you're saying most or in other words you've used the word all all toxic relationships are to be blamed uh, you know to the men it's on that now the women fuel it up they fuel it up so it's the men who have the problem men always have a leadership role that god has given them and so many times they use that role knowingly or unknowingly to start a problem even without them knowing <laughs> do you agree with that sarah <laughs> where it is shida ni wanaume how ndo wanaleta shida sana sana kwa vita ndio kwa kiswahili wanasema mwanza maneno ni wewe <laughs> interestingly but not in all cases uh -huh. yeah not in all cases because you know some uh, bottom line it depends on the reason as to why you want to be in that person's life mm. so and um, for your own reasons if you're malicious then it works against you so I don't agree that men are all causes of uh, relationship marriages issues mm -hmm. I don't think so and I want to chip in uh, in many of my cases, situations, you know, real life, because as a pastor, I live with people. <laughs> you know, you cancel them. Sometimes they are members of my church. Maybe one of them is a member of my church. Mm. So you realize that my relationship will extend mm -hmm. beyond that counseling room. Okay. And you live to see mm. the aftermath of that relationship decision. Mm. In many cases, ladies can see telltale signs of somebody's um, misconduct or maybe mis a behavior problem mm. but sometimes 
it's like the, the politicians say that the train has left the station. So oh. you, you realize this, they begin to pray mm -hmm. to ask God to confirm if this person is really the person or not. Mm -hmm. But at the back of their mind, they've already made a decision. That this is, <laughs> okay, that, that is what they want. They know what they want, but they're just praying for That's God's why I tell you, mostly it is men who start off these problematic issues, toxic environment, but women are well-meaning. Now, let me, let, let, let me get it further. Mm -hmm. When I'm in a toxic relationship, is it only when they beat me? When you start disagreeing and you can't come to a possible solution. I think that's when now you can't reason together like Mr. Okod is saying. You know, you can't get your minds together to fix something. Okay. So I think when you lose in communication, mm -hmm. conversations, now the relationship starts. That's Sarah, the if, if it were you, let me, let me put you on the spotlight. Mm -hmm. If it were you, when a man beats you up mm -hmm. and apologizes, mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. mm -hmm. they beat you up again mm -hmm. and apologize. Mm -hmm. Every time it's, it, 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 it's a cycle. Mm -hmm. How many times do you uh, forgive them? I think um, there is some foolishness when uh, there is a saying that says that or people believe or a notion that if a man hits you, he loves you and most people buy that actually. And for me personally, it's you hit me once and th that that's the, the end of you hitting me because uh, well, but I'm moja too. Yeah, even trying to hit me, I think it, the next time you're going to beat me up, like even to kill me to an extent of, you know, eliminating me. So why would you wait for a person to kill you or to harm you? I believe uh, everyone needs to be loved, right? Are you saying that anyone who beats you can kill you? Yeah, what if you... Any hitting, I mean... <laughs> Ram, if you have uh, maybe an issues with maybe health and maybe you're not even aware, somebody hits you and you collapse, you die. You know, okay. no one is supposed to hit the other person. I mean, you're supposed to live peacefully. Even women slap men. Many yeah, t many times. Even women slap men. <laughs> many times. <laughs> and uh, I've seen men even in movies. So when I put coffee and the, the man is like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I don't think I don't think that's how people should resolve their issues. Okay. For me, I don't think that's the way of you know inflicting pain in somebody's body. It's not the right way to go. I I I always think uh, that toxic relationship does not just mean uh, violence. Mm. You know. You know, there are people who know how to get their way. They can, they can, <laughs> you know, like we always define sin as a commission or omission of something. Mm -hmm. You know, there are people who can even keep quiet. Even as they're being... They don't talk to you. And that becomes toxic. They are supposed to talk, but they refuse to talk. Or they talk when it's not supposed to be the right time for you to talk. Pastor, let me, let, let, let me cut you short there. Um, I hope you don't lose your, your train of thought, but you're saying someone who keeps quiet has the ability to frustrate you. Yes. Um, let me give an example. You ask a woman, are you okay? She says, I'm fine. Yes. Are you sure you're okay? He says, I'm okay. But if you look at their face and their behavior, they it, definitely it shows okay. another thing. Yes. Yeah. Is that also a sign of, of, of someone being toxic? That is a toxic relationship. So women are because toxic. a toxic relationship <laughs> in in essence is a kind of relationship in which you are choked. You know, you can't enjoy. I, I always think that a relationship should be a, a situation or an environment in which you are free. Mm -hmm. Like she's saying, although I don't agree with that 100%, <laughs> you, you should be free. You should be free, like in modern days, uh, we take our, our daughters to school, we take our sons to school, and we spend so much money in educating them. And then at the end of the university, or even a master's or a, a PhD, then they get married maybe to a person who is not as educated as them, and the person, because of their own inferiority syndrome mm. begins to choke them through behavior and through words and through actions that they never began for at the beginning of the relationship. They may not be violent, but they may be making somebody not feel free to enjoy life. Because a relationship 
is based on friendship. It is foundational. Friendship is foundational in any relationship. People start with the relationship. Uh, at, at, that's why many times at the, at the point of people beginning relationship, let's say between a man and a woman, it begins with attraction. Attraction <coughs> is just physical, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It is physical, and when somebody is attracted to a lady, or a lady is attracted to a man physically, <laughs> they don't mean any harm. But pastor, you blame the men. <laughs> many times. And you blame both sexes. Uh, yeah. But the you question know. is, between men and women, who are more toxic, who are more violent? Well, how can you know that you're in, an, in a toxic relationship? Make sure that you head over to Facebook and answer these questions that we are asking. Our Facebook page is also, is also up and running. And we've posted this on our pages there on Facebook and on Twitter. And, uh, you know, these are issues that we talk about them. We read about them, you know. We've watched them on TV, on news stories. Some of us have even been or gone through them. Toxic relationships, these are the issues that we are talking about. And how destructive can they be? How painful can it be to be in a toxic relationship? Is it just physical? Can it be emotional? Can it be psychological? Let me t uh, just read a few of your thoughts on Facebook. I'm seeing uh, Nikki Franco Anasema that uh, you do not feel like you can openly express your opinion. You don't have to work like a detective, so just move on. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Irene uh, Jennifer Anasema, a man, that's my pastor there. Eh? Someone is. Uh, yes, I'm a, I'm a senior pastor at Rongai First Church of Nazarene. Rongai he's, First Church? Yes, it's, it's the first church mm -hmm. as you enter Rongai Township. Oh, mm -hmm. that's why it's called the First Church? Yes. Wow. <laughs> and it's also a First Nazarene Church mm -hmm. that was built in that locality. And I wonder how is it with COVID? Yeah, we, we are closed, but uh, the building is closed. Mm -hmm. But we have many ways to connect, and we always continue to minister to people in different ways okay sour that is uh, Irene Jennifer sour sour and I say my Reverend Kennedy I am ready with my pen and paper to take notes <laughs> all right thank you so much for your your thoughts um, Nikki Franco let me pick what Nick, 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 Nick said you do not feel like you can openly express your opinion mm -hmm. that's what you had said earlier yes. now you, you um, let, let me get to you Susan uh, I am aware that uh, in your capacity mm -hmm. You are at uh, you, you are actually a, a, you are the founder of Prime Holiday Adventures. Mm, sure. It means you interact with different people yeah. every day sure. as you move around the country. Mm -hmm. When you interact with people, have you seen camp couples, you know, and they are dating, they are together, they come, you know, to Prime uh, Adventures and uh, they are moving around, but the way they behave, you feel like one person is suppressed. In that relationship is it is it possible for an outsider to pick out that this relationship that i see there is actually toxic yes definitely if uh even if you're just walking in a shopping mall or something you you can spot mm. you can spot uh two people who are together and uh you realize these people are not how how, how, how can you tell how can you tell the, the, you know Someone has is taking the other out. Mm -hmm. You are on an adventure. How can you tell? Some even would quarrel in front of people, mm. like they they are disagreeing, and one can even leave the other. So, or maybe uh, they wanted to go on a holiday, and suddenly they just cancel because maybe one feels like I don't want to go with you, or maybe you did something that. I just want to to make you suffer. You paid for the holiday, but mm. I want to be available. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or Pastor, maybe you, you're wasting money or something. They just disagreeing. As you yeah. look at your church members, can you be able to pick out church members that are in a toxic relationship, but they are not, uh, you know, saying anything. They are quiet about it. Um, you know, mm, the, this is something that you can see in my role from where I sit. Uh, I need always to be proactive. Mm. So the, the kind of engagement that I provide for the people that come to my church, and uh, especially those who get married from the church, uh, we, we, we provide a proactive environment in which uh, we dialogue with them even, you know, we, we always have premarital counseling, and then we also have post-marriage counseling. So within post-marriage counseling, we find an opportunity to, 
to, to deal with things that can be able to make any relationship toxic. Most of the time, relationships become toxic when people don't find an opportunity to share. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. There was a young man who got married to a very beautiful girl. They were all learned, all graduates. People, who, Many people always uh, assume that university graduates are... Are, are, are well bred, isn't it? Mm. But I've been at the university, I've taught, and I know that many are not well prepared sometimes for marriage. That uh, if, you're, if you're in, at, at in, the, in university, at, yes. then you're ready for marriage. Uh, many people think that people who go to the university are mature, they are well bred, mm -hmm. they know how to take care of the, themselves. I've come to realize it's not so. That is just an, an academic environment. Somebody may be very sharp academically, mm -hmm. but not really so when it comes to social sense. Okay. So this young man got married. They went for a honeymoon, a beautiful wedding, but then I was a young person. And then they went for honeymoon. I admired their wedding. And when they went out there, two days later, I saw the lady. After marriage? After marriage. Two days after the wedding? Yes, but you know, because I was a young man in the church, I couldn't ask. Later on, I came to realize they had a difference in their honeymoon because of issues related to sex. Wow. The lady was very spiritual, was brought up in a Christian family. It's, I know it's, very, it's not easy to find such. She was not well schooled when it comes to social issues and sex, blah, blah. And this young man was okay. So when they went there, their discussions and uh, trying to begin life, their first night brought a problem to them and the lady came back her own understanding and you no know, so some of these things can be out of lack of knowledge and therefore the church needs to come in to help people to understand some things all right let me let me let, let, let me pause you there pastor yes that's uh, quite an interesting story there and i would you will continue with that after this break. yes Remember, it's all about toxic relationships when do you leave when do you move on how do you deal with it do you stay and fight as we were taught by <laughs> our grandmothers. Let's take a break. We'll be back in a bit. Why two five four? Imagine. All right. Thank you so much for keeping it Y254. It's always a pleasure. I'm seeing so many comments up, you know, coming up on Facebook. And let me just read but a few. Um, let, Winnie Julie. And said, one should live when it threatens their lives. And individuals should, individuals should never use children to remain in toxic relationships. Children mm -hmm. also part. Because it also affects them we can heal by getting counseling and knowing that they deserve better when someone beats you and that's it don't uh, uh, beats you that's it don't look back that's putting your life in danger i support sarah there are better ways of solving conflicts than getting physical enjoying the show from nakuru support i support pastor uh, the, the pastor men are the causes of of problems many times yes pastor, wow. <laughs> men yes like you know, no miss, no, no. we had a story uh, this week of a man who was killed. You know, this officer. Yes. Uh, I'm seeing Janet and some toxic relationships have red flags. Once your partner hits you or abuses you, leave. Don't wait for the worst to happen. I'm seeing one interesting one by Elfas Keep Letting Capzulu. This is interesting. Uh, hear this. Mm -hmm. At the point when a finger is pointed at you. At the point when the face shrinks in anger, at the point when you are slapped and kicked, at the point when you are threatened with death, if not at the point when you are murdered. Mm -hmm. Wow. Faith Maganga Nasema Taita to collect loving the conversation. Keep tweeting, keep texting. The hashtag is always 
is why uh, is a power talk show at y254 channel on twitter at ram maguko make sure that you tag me as you continue with this conversation it's all about understanding toxic relationships when do you move on make sure that you be part of this conversation if at all you're joining us you're just in time for the next part of this conversation and uh, i would like to um come to you to to to, to you pastor before we went on a break you're giving us a story about this couple yes married yes went for honeymoon yes but now because of the difference in upbringing yes. the lady has no clue about uh, sexual issues but the man has every clue about it yes so they disagreed they what did next? they did disagree and uh, it took uh, the counsel of the pastors to talk to them mm -hmm. uh, but it took a lot of time did because they, separate? Uh, they didn't separate later they on they, they, uh, later on they started living together mm -hmm. but you realize that their difference came because of difference in perception their worldview they were trained by this life differently mm -hmm. they came maybe from different communities one, one of the challenges i find today is that there are people who are not wired for cross marriages for cross cultural marriages mm. There are people who are not wired for that, yet they try to enter into a marriage with people outside of their community. There are people who should just, out, there are some people I tell them, mm. you just try to get a person from your community. Because okay. you won't do with a person out of your community. It will be problematic. And so sometimes those differences in education, in income, differences in culture, language, <laughs> parent, uh, um, coaching, you know, sometimes makes us not to be compatible. Otherwise, with some help, we can be able to learn to be together. All right. Uh, l let me come to you, Sarah. Um, let's, l let me touch on sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. because, it, uh, because now this is where things also get nasty mm -hmm. in relation to what he said. Mm -hmm. um, at what point should you be able to predetermine that this is now sexual abuse, that my own husband or my own wife mm -hmm. is abusing me sexually. Is there a line that needs to be drawn mm -hmm. when it comes to these matters? Yes, I, uh, I agree. And um, I think uh, from the beginning, from the beginning, and I concur with Pastor the way he's saying uh, premarital and postmarital uh, counseling. Mm. I think uh, it works better because you're able to to talk things at length, mm -hmm. so that you don't find your, you, yourself in a marriage that you know you feel, especially men, mm. uh, that you know you're being denied your conjugal rights, mm. and uh, that's when now you know it becomes even hard because moving uh, out of marriage it's different from you know just walking away from the relationship but but, but then um mm -hmm. they say that uh, if your partner denies mm -hmm. you your conjugal rights then mm -hmm. it's also a bad thing so uh, we've seen on social media some mm -hmm. saying if then they cheat on you don't mm -hmm. blame them you've seen that happening in church also you know sometimes it happens depending on the people involved in a relationship but um, you know there is an issue of human rights mm. human rights issues are not biblical <laughs> and they are also not African <laughs> what do you mean uh, when, when people get married yeah. they will learn to get along we assume so in, within African culture and we also assume so within the Christian culture so, but, 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 but when you say it's not biblical, you, you, you're saying that there are no scriptures and uh, no biblical verses that support uh, sexual issues? There are, there are. many, many. Uh, the challenge that I was having with the issue of a, a, a partner, mm. even a man, deny, you know, when we, when we talk about people denying one another conjugal rights, mm. we always think it is women who, who may deny, even a man can. Mm -hmm. A person of that kind is a very selfish person. So it and that, that can also lead to a toxic relationship. That is already that's a byproduct of a toxic beginning. You know that that's now the fruit. Most most of the time, for somebody just to deny somebody conjugal rights is insane. 
<laughs> somebody that you love. It shows that now you stop loving them. There are many people who always say that people love one another, that, that love is blind. Mm. Until you get married, then love goes through, uh, goes out through the window. Those are abnormal cases that we cannot base our arguments on. Would, would, you, would you like to get a Bible? You can read some verses that... Uh Yes, I, I, I came. Did you carry your Bible? Yes, I carried my Bible. Bring, just bring that. Yes, where, where I have the, a big Bible. Bible. Uh, Pastor, at, 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 at I, the I, I, I will answer you indirectly. Just, just bring it, just bring it. G give it to him. Thank you so much. Because we want to, to find out what it, we, are, we are talking about. I, I will read for you, first of all, uh. the, book of the book called Genesis. Genesis is a book of the beginning. Genesis basically means beginning. Mm -hmm. Beginning of man, uh -huh. beginning of this creation, uh -huh. beginning of sin, beginning of sacrifice, beginning of offerings, beginning mm -hmm. everything that we see began in Genesis. in Genesis. So that's why the book called Genesis is. Let Let's look at chapter 2. Uh -huh. In chapter 2, we see where God created uh, all people. That uh, the, the time the time of creation, and have you have you found it? Even yes. I, 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 as as you look for it, yes. as you look for it, let me come to you to to, to you, Sarah. Um, when we are talking about uh, sexual abuse in relationships, mm -hmm. there is one issue that um, comes into my mind: rape. Mm -hmm. And most women, or some women, mm -hmm. let me just say, most based on statistics, mm -hmm. don't talk about it. They are quiet and they say that it is embarrassing if I would talk about it. What would you be your opinion about that? Exactly. It's, uh, it's very embarrassing. Mm -hmm. One thing even, uh, you know, some even uh, we have seen recently mm. um, uh, a public figure just talking, um, just speaking out when they are able to, when they gain courage to. But, you know, you feel violated. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And... Um, you didn't be confident enough, you know, to speak out that, you know, this man, you know, did this and this. You try and you confide yourself and, you know, the process of healing and dealing with it at a personal level before now you speak out. So, and, should you um, speak out? Yes, and uh, the, the most uh, affected are the, the young ladies, you know, they don't know who to tell. And maybe you find in some instances that these are maybe close family members, mm. even maybe we have heard of maybe even stepdads, you know, uh, 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 dealing with the, the, the young girls. And I think at this point, uh, it's just we should encourage and maybe speak to our young girls, you mm. know, for us to, uh, you know, to advocate and to, you know, deal with rape. Like, you know, this is just a monster. You should not rape anyone it can happen whether you regardless of your marital status of whether you're single or married yeah even gender you know there are other men who are raped and uh, men actually i don't think they talk about it and we should have this society that we have uh, you know freedom of you know speaking and not being judged because because at the, at the end of the day even men get raped but they are afraid because of the, they, they feel as if, you know, I am a man. You know. It's embarrassing for me. Very embarrassing, oh. especially in African setting. Mm -hmm. And um, we should tell people if uh, somebody rapes you, just say it and publicly say that this is the one who raped me. So mm -hmm. that we can, you know, deal with rape and we have a secure society for everyone. Uh, okay. You, you, are in, you, you found the verse? Yes, chapter 2. Uh -huh. Genesis chapter 2. So you're saying everything has a beginning? Yes, everything has a beginning. So the Bible tells us uh, that uh, in verse, let's begin from verses 20. I'll just read quickly mm -hmm. because of time. So Adam, so Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was no found helper com compatible to him and the lord god caused a deep sleep to fall on adam and he slept he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in its place then the rib which the lord god had taken from the man he made into a woman and he brought her to the man and adam said this is now the bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh she called she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave. For that reason, you know, I was reading, mm -hmm. now for that reason mm. of that the kind of creation that God made, uh -huh. 
a man shall leave his uh, his father and mother and yeah. be joined together to his wife and they shall become mm-hmm. one flesh and they were both naked <laughs> that is verse 25 mm. and they were both naked adam and eve were both naked man and his wife and they were not ashamed that's what the bible says it means that in a relationship a marriage relationship people cannot be ashamed of one another they should be naked to each other in terms of speaking Mm -hmm. you know even if you have a project and you are not sure your partner will Mm -hmm. will support it Mm -hmm. your role is just to say it because you are you decided it's a decision that you'd already made you are not making a decision within marriage the problem is you've been naked to your partner you've been very transparent with them yes they don't support you They, they will support you one day you need to keep that hope alive and i'm not of this idea Mm. that when the when the when when that relationship become toxic you run where are you running to so marriage is permanent you vumilia and look for opportunities Mm. to change that relationship it can work why should it not work (laughs) <laughs> um, all, right, all right. Um quickly, no, 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 Miriam uh uh Nakufa na Gicheko. I hope you are learning something. Okay, so what we did, we asked our viewers to be able to, to, to send us a clip of themselves. Remember, you can be part of this conversation every week. All you have to do is send us a one minute clip of yourself, give us your opinion about this, and we shall be able to air your video, air you right here on this show. So um, let's start with the first clip. To Konanani um, Ron. Okay. Oh, so we, we have Gagura Romero. Uh huh. It's I hope Ikotari. Sindio, bring it up. Mm-hmm. Let's have that. In a toxic relationship. I had a partner who was a womanizer and very manipulative about it. Any attempts to confront him on the issue always resulted to me sounding like a jealous lover and an insecure girlfriend. But what gave me the strength to finally walk out of the door was the realization that he was having unprotected sex with these women. So not only was I risking a heartbreak, I was also risking getting infected with STDs. So that was the it for me. That was the breaking point. I had to leave. Talking about the toxic relationship, I have been an instance of whereby I was dating a person who took my advantage of emotional uh, attachment at that time whereby I was trying to unlearn things which I had done previously. I was in an emotional entanglement, uh, if that's appropriate whereby you find that you are not so much well. And my spouse used that advantage to give me the toxic relationship, but the moment I made that move, this is the moment that I started to have a recovery of my own, and I'm grateful for that. All right, uh, that is uh, the, 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 those are uh, just a few uh, that we could be able to sample right now because of the interest of time. One, one, one of our, our viewers was able to get a sexually transmitted infection mm-hmm. or disease um, in the process. Another one, um, uh, another one is saying that uh, they were in, and he was in an, he, he termed it as emotional entanglement. I believe you've heard of it, and uh, you, you, you've heard the clips. What are your thoughts uh, about it? Let me start with you, with you sir. Mm-hmm. That's uh, that's a good point, actually. Now to to move away from that relationship, mm. you know that that means that uh, you can't trust that person again definitely uh he or she going to harm you so i think that's the point you just walk away from those people it is it, it's, it's also cheating a part mm-hmm. of being in a toxic relationship cheating <sighs> yes because uh, yeah, uh, there is no reasons as to why somebody should cheat on you that means uh-huh. they are not they are not happy with you okay yeah that's the, the that's the the whole point of it you know i'm not happy with you i'm finding happiness should you forgive from them somebody for else uh i don't think you should forgive them never forgive yeah you even in a marriage setting you don't forgive relation you, you are cheating personally i don't end I have an experience of, You've had of an it. experience? Yes. Are you able to share my uni? <laughs> I can, I can share. Share, share, share. Yeah. <laughs> what happened? And was that a toxic relationship that you're in? Yes, at, at one point, uh, when actually it, it had moved to where you're supposed now to, 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 to now make things uh, legal, 
and you live together and at uh, at any point i think you can call it quit you live together because no it was at that point where by somebody engages you and you realize they're not faithful mm. are you ready to walk into that uh, that marriage and be with somebody that you don't you no longer trust so i felt it was the right decision to make for me to just move away from that you person because him. i felt he's toxic and he gonna you know i'll have a toxic marriage at the end pastor let yes, me give pastor. you a thought <laughs> react to what our viewers have said and what she, she has said i think the first one was talking about uh, getting h uh, getting Mm. It was a disease, sexually transmitted. Yeah, sexually transmitted, STD. Mm. Uh, <laughs> first of all, you know, was it getting STD when you are in a relationship before you got married, or is it within the family setup? Mm. You realize there are some steps that when you take in this life, and you miss a step towards where you want to go to. You will always come back to that step. There are some parts of the processes of life that you cannot do without. You can't ignore them. Mm -hmm. Many times how you begin a relationship will always show us where you end up. Mm -hmm. There are many relationships that were, were meant to be mm -hmm. that have been distracted damaged, destroyed by us as people because of the way we handled one another before marriage. But now there is this, um, the, the, one of our viewers talked about emotional entanglement. Uh, emotional entanglement, all those things you realize, I think he's reacting to a, 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 a relationship outside marriage. And he's expecting too much. There are people who expect too much. Mm -hmm. from a relationship mm -hmm. okay. and, and and they want they always want to be free but they maybe they want the lady not to be free and so in that kind of situation they don't want to say where they are going they don't want to say what they are doing they don't to say they don't want to say where they are working they don't want to say how much they are earning mm. and when a person in a relationship especially ladies they will always ask how much do you earn where do you work and some people may see that as somebody becoming too inquisitive uh, and mm -hmm. they can look at it as an emotional entanglement. They are entangled with somebody emotionally but, but, that but, they are but, supposed but not to. But should you share such details with your partner, Sarah? Sh will, can you share every detail about your life with your partner? Should you do it? Does it mean that you love them when you share with them you know, this information? Or does it mean that you are actually secretive to your partner? You are not being transparent or naked with them? I think... Um when you start the relationship you're supposed to 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 have openness because why you why do you want to be in my life and you're concealing some things why why should you hide anything from me I is mean, it is it being toxic when your partner wants to check your phone you just come from a conversation in the other room mm -hmm. and then later letter your simu they take your phone mm -hmm. snatch it go through all the messages is that toxic to some point yes to some extent uh but um it when you see somebody uh taking your phone you know and behaving like what you've just said mm. is because they are losing trust you're doing you're hiding something There's a problem uh, of trust. yes and mm. uh in a relationship you're supposed to be open because if ev i think everyone who gets into uh, um, a relationship they always want it to end into marriage so why would you hide that where mm. you're going and you know you should have openness because if i realize you're not hiding anything from me mm. i won't be that inquisitive you won't give me so much work mm. of finding a lot about you that mm. you're hiding would you share you know? your passwords account details with your partner yeah the, the, to some extent yes there yes. The, there is what you're supposed to share uh like you know phone passwords and all that i all believe right. it's supposed mm -hmm. to i'll give you an example to support what she says mm -hmm. where i live in ongata rongai mm. there is a real case scenario in which somebody built a house in rongai in rongai mm and nobody knows the person dies nobody knows the family members it has never been claimed it's a small house so 
there so, is a house that no one knows who, yes. he, who owns it. Because that person was building for his own reasons. He didn't say it. Maybe for a side, uh, side chick or maybe maybe wanted to surprise the spouse. We don't know. <laughs> but the reality <laughs> is that he died <laughs> and left that house. So, you know, there are some things that you may think uh, uh, you are doing for good. Uh, but it's but, harming you. But it will harm people around you and it will come back to you. Uh, yeah. uh, let, me, let me go back to that issue of STD. Mm. Maybe I didn't answer him well. As a man, there are many men that have claimed that they have STD. Later on, I realize it's, uh, you know, there are some things that behave like STD. <laughs> there are some sicknesses that behave like STD, <laughs> which are not STD. Okay. They may be infections, you know. There are things that are called, but somebody, when they are out of love, when they don't love you, <laughs> and they get that kind of thing, they blow the, 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 the sailing. They hit the yeah. sailing. They say it's the STD. <laughs> so sometimes, you need to, to work with the spouse so that they can go to the hospital. In fact, if you go to the hospital, they will ask you, where is your spouse, so that they can be able to help you both. Okay. It may sometimes not be STD. Faster, let me, let me read, a, read more comments. Hey, comments are, are, are plenty, 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 plenty. Is uh, he a doctor, by the way? How can he know that that is STD? How can he know? He, how did he know? Uh, what I was saying is that you can even go to a toilet that is dirty and get an infection. Many ladies know that. that it's your partner. It, it may not be your partner. And then it you may even be a visitor. Um, 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 but um, it, it is not STD. What fighting. I mean, that is not STD. <laughs> it's just an infection. See, it's seen it happen. There are many infections. Yeah, especially uh, these toilets that uh, we do use. Uh, Isaac Nalianya, and, you, you know, you, 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 and then you wonder, you got an infection from a washroom in town. Yes. Then you go home, start quarreling with your partner. That yes. You. you hit children, you start pushing children. <laughs> All you right. say they are like their mother <laughs> for nothing. <laughs> is it, by the way, that thing of saying, Unaka kama mama yako. It is out of anger. It's when toxic also. It, it very toxic. Let me read a, a few comments. Isaac Maliana, I think when you realize that you're in a toxic relationship, it's better to end it and start something new that in prison, uh, uh, than in prison yourself, hoping for the impossible. Hoping for the impossible. Mm -hmm. Pastor, you said, Vumilie. Makea Nasama, this Makea Ninga is saying, all right, let me cut this. Uh -huh. You want to confirm that we are on air? We are on air. Send in your thoughts on Facebook and on Twitter as you continue this conversation. Sometimes the signs are clear emotional, physical abuse, criticism, lying, cheating, emotional starvation. Sometimes there is nothing outstanding because it's, uh, it, it doesn't feel right. It did once. But that ended a long time ago. Wow. Interesting tweets there. Pastor, I, I, I would like us to, to give yet another example. <laughs> um, you've said that someone can be able to pinpoint mm -hmm. a toxic person, mm -hmm. a toxic individual. For those who are not yet married, yes. you know, the, the problem no, no, yeah. is normally with those who are married because of you, Fanya Nimi. Yes. But now for those who are not yet married, yes. the youths, yes. they want to en engage, get engaged with yes. these pa partners. Yes. Mm. What would you advocate? Do they stay together mm. and waonje? Yes. And after they, they, they say, ah, okay, so we in Nisawa take Ama X. What should they do for them to be able to predetermine the uh, how, how stable or the foundation of their relationship at the initial stages before they get into marriage where what I ka hapo vumilia hapo. I think uh, the issues of openness and being free with the other person and uh, you know gaining that trust and respect is when you get to share and be open. There's nothing to hide so that I can be able to know more about you can be able to know more about me. All right. Do you have your uh, answer? Yes. Yes. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't like the issue of stay together. Huh. That's what uh, makes Im uh, marriage impossible. Uh -huh. When you have a relationship, when you start a relationship and you had uh, some sexual mischief before your wedding, mm -hmm. any time you see your spouse talking to somebody and they are close, you may think they want to do the same. So you realize it, 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 it does not help. 
Mm. It is important to engage. If you are engaged, be engaged. Date, know one another, meet in town, go to different places, uh, uh, places that do not involve uh, exposure like swimming. No, you, you <laughs> go to town, there's a lot of yeah. chips and chicken in town, uh -huh. especially during the days we were growing up. It was, I grew up in Mombasa. Mm. Ch ch fish and, and chips and chicken, those were the in thing and so does it. You need to take time so that you talk. You know, you More talk, updates. you mm -hmm. talk, yeah. Mm -hmm. You talk, you share. You share what you like, you share what you don't like. There are many things to talk about. The only thing is people don't get that opportunity to talk. We have a men's ministry in my church, mm. and our main focus is to mentor young people. It's called Bethel. Mm. We try to hook up to young people that we realize are getting closer to marriage, and we try to talk to them so that they are equipped when they get into marriage. Mm. I also have a small program that we do on Saturdays. It's, it's more of a, chi a feeding program because I realize that many children uh, do not have um, all parents. They come from mm. single parents, broken okay. families. Okay. And uh, the main thing that I've been doing is to nurture these children, to start to talk to them so that they grow up with the capability that they become responsible as when they come to times of relationship. So uh, at the end of the day, you don't advocate for people staying together. They can go out. Staying and together start. is one of the right. worst mistakes. All it's right. a bad step and towards if, marriage. If worse comes to us, when they start threatening you that they will kill you, move out. Would you uh, report it? M most of those threats come because of toxic, <laughs> toxic foundations that were made right. during the f uh, the time that people are knowing one another. All right, Pastor. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, time yes. has. N uh, uh, ha ha uh, Muda umetupa kisogo. Yes. <laughs> uh, but thank you so much. I was with uh, Pastor uh, Kennedy Okoth uh, from, uh, you know, he, he's a teacher, uh, teaches at African Nazarene University, a motivational speaker, a counselor, and a pastor. I also uh, teach at Nazarene Bible College. At Nazarene Bible College. Make yes. sure that you uh, link up with him. I believe you're on Facebook, right? Yes. How can people find you? You can find me on my Facebook account, Kennedy Okoth, right. or you can go to Rongai yeah. First Church of the Nazarene. We, right. You can also come physically to Rongai Church, especially when we, yes, Pastor. When we, we get we, off we, we, the we lockdown. To, you have to end the conversation there. <laughs> yes. Sarah, people can, how can people find you? Uh, you can uh, find us on Facebook at Prime Holiday Adventures right. Limited. Thank you so much. Yes. This has been a power talk. I hope that you've been empowered through this talk. My name is Ram Maguko. May God bless you. May God bless the work of your hands. I would like just to give one final comment on this. My own view. Remove yourself from people who treat you like you are sometimes, that, you some, that your time doesn't matter, that your feelings are worthless, that your soul is irreplaceable. Sometimes you need to give up on people, not because you don't care about them, but because they just don't care about you. May God bless you. God bless the work of your hands. This is Power Talk.